Hi everybody, Cameron Dulles here, back with another WSV3 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking again about the drop shadow layer, but this time this tutorial is going to be a little bit different than the previous one that I did. The first tutorial that I did was when I only thought that the drop shadow could be done outside of WSV3 only and that it couldn't be put into the actual program itself. But I have since learned that you actually can put the drop shadow layer into WSV3. And so I wanted to make another tutorial to show you exactly how to go about doing that. So as you currently see on my screen, this is WSV3. And this is my map with the drop shadow layer. I can zoom in and I can zoom out. And the drop shadow layer works as it is shown. So we're going to go through the tutorial step by step. Let's get started. Alright, for this next part, we're going to need to open up a web browser. doesn't matter what web browser you have, just as long as you can look something up on a search engine such as Google.com or Bing or any of those uh, similar search engines. Uh, basically, what we're trying to get to is the census.gov website. So what I did is I typed in census counties shapefile. And then it brought up the cartographic boundaries file link. And for me, it was the very first link. It may be uh, somewhere uh, different within the page for you, depending on your search engine. But you'll want to click on that link. It'll bring you up to a website like this. Again, cartographic boundary files shape file. We're going to keep scrolling down, and you're going to see a whole list of all these different files. We want to go to the county section. And we want the 500k resolution. You're going to click that and download it. And it will go to wherever your downloads are supposed to go to on your computer. Probably the downloads folder most common. Unless you've specifically set it to go somewhere else. Uh, but you will want to find this file once you've downloaded it. I've already downloaded it. So I am going to move on to the next step from here. All right, so for this next part, we're going to need the program that's going to do all the magic for us, basically the program that's going to allow us to design the map, and that is QGIS. You're going to need a web browser once again, as well as a search engine to be able to look that up. You'll just simply type in QGIS. It'll bring up the link to the QGIS website. We're going to go there, and then you're going to want to hit the Download Now button on the main page and then I think you're going to want the standalone installer version 3.22 I think that's the newest version out of them all there's all kinds of instructions on here so I encourage you to read those uh, as you go through and install it if you haven't done so uh, already alright so for this next part you're going to need to open up QGIS then from there, we're going to start a new project. So to hit the area that says New Empty Project. So then you're going to have a blank workspace. So now we need to bring in that map that we downloaded from the census.gov website. Mine is in the Downloads folder. Yours might be there as well, or it may be located in a different location, depending on where you saved it when you downloaded it. You're going to want to then take that file you will not want to do anything with it outside of QGIS. You don't need to open it or anything like that. You're just going to simply click it and drag it right into QGIS into the Layers tab. And then from there, it's going to bring up a dialog box. We want the very first layer and or the one that's just got the .shp or shape file behind it. We do not want to highlight any of these ones with .xml or else it will give an error to the QGIS program. So just the shape file, and that's all. Then it's going to bring up another dialog box. Just hit OK. We don't need to do anything there. So then from there, we've got a map to work with. At this point, you're going to want to decide what your boundary or county's area is that you will want to highlight to make your map. That will then include the drop shadow layer. So to start highlighting counties, going to come up here to the top left and hit the little highlight button where my mouse is hovering. And then we're going to just go through and start clicking on counties. As you do so, you're going to want to hold down on the shift key so you can multi-select and be able to select all the counties that you wish to highlight. And you will just keep doing this until you have selected all of the counties 
that are within the area that you want to include. And so once you have done that, we will then come over and we will do uh, export and we will save selected future as and we want to save it as an ESRI shape file and then we need to name it something so name it something that you will remember it as and we're going to uh, call this uh, drop shadow layer and then we'll hit the three dots and then we're going to save it somewhere somewhere that the program will allow I would recommend somewhere on the desktop I created a file folder specifically for this project it's got a previous file in there uh, but I'm going to use this folder anyways as it should work and so once you have found a spot to save it that it will allow you to save it you're going to do that so now we have our selection highlighted there in pink and we have two different layers now you see there's a uh, layer on top and a layer on bottom one's the original which is all the outer area and then one is just the area that we selected we want to deselect this outer area we don't really need to deal with that anymore at this point we just want to deal with the area that we highlighted and that's it at this point we're going to then hit the pencil and we want to select the entire thing and then we want to go to edit and merge the selected features and we don't need to do anything here we'll just hit OK and so then once we do that we will now be able to move on to our next step alright so for this next part what we're going to want to do is we'll turn off the editing and what it'll do is it'll bring up dialog asking you to save it you will want to save it I've already done so and then you'll turn the editing back on just hit that pencil again and then highlight and then right next to where you see an icon that looks like a pair of scissors right next door to the right is an icon that looks like two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other that's the copy button we want to hit copy and then we want to deselect alright so before we get into the next part there is one thing that I want to make mention of and it's something that's kinda of gonna help I think make it to where the overall look of the drop shadow layer will look a little bit more cleaner in the end and that is to bring in an additional layer uh, called the counties layer and this would have been done if you have previously made a uh, designated counties map layer uh, kinda like uh, what I have over here in WSV3 where it's just my county lines there I made that part separately from the actual drop shadow layer these are actually two different layers uh, in itself and so I would recommend bringing in that separate shape file if you have it if not what I would recommend is I do have a tutorial that I made previously on how to make a county's layer map like this and I would recommend going back and watching that and creating that and then coming back to this tutorial as I think it'll help make it to where you'll be able to line up the drop shadow like I have here and make it look a lot cleaner otherwise you would kinda have to guess where the uh, drop shadow should go and relevance to where the actual lines and everything else lines up and so uh, I will link the previous tutorial down in the description all right, so as we get into this next part, you're going to want to make sure you have this third toolbar on here that's got all these icons. The one specifically that looks like a area of grass with a blue arrow underneath it, that's the move button. In order for that to show up, because it may not be there by default when you first open the program, especially if you just downloaded it for the first time, you're going to want to right click within the toolbar area and then it'll bring up this uh, dialog box and then you want to go down to toolbars and make sure the checkbox with advanced digitizing toolbar is checked once you've done so we should have access then to this toolbar here and we want to hit the move button 
I have my counties layer on right now, which is showing the county lines just so I can better visualize the entire map as a whole as far as how it would actually look in WSV3. Because as we click the pink area here and start moving it around, we get this little red highlighted area. That is actually going to be serving as our drop shadow layer as far as that's the layer that we're fixing to move around. And we don't want it to be too close in or otherwise the rest of the layer itself is going to sit over top of it and you won't be able to see the drop shadow. So we want to leave some space when we do so and you're just going to want to pick the area where you want the drop shadow to be. So once you have kind of found that desired uh, spot and you have it how you want it to look then we will just simply move it like so and we will then uncheck the layer for the county lines as we don't really need that no more then what we want to do is we want to create a new shape file and then you'll type in the file name and hit the three dots and then save it in a spot where you can save it Again, that's uh, going to be a new shape file, and then the geometry type is going to be a polygon, and then you will hit OK. And then once you have done that, you should have then a new layer. I would recommend titling it something along the lines of top layer, as that's going to be serving as our top layer. And then at this point, you're going to want to make sure that the editing pencil is on, and then hit edit, and then we're going to paste. And that is the layer that we copied earlier on within the tutorial, and that is our top layer. So now that we have that, we can proceed on with the next step, which is to go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, and then Symmetrical Difference. So then at this point, we want our top layer over our drop shadow layer. And then we'll hit Run, and then Close. So there it is. So now what we can do is we can work with it a little bit closer now. Hit that editing pencil again, and this will allow us to work with these two layers that highlight. So there's two separate layers on each side that highlight. This is where you kind of have to decide, okay, where do I want the drop shadow layer, and where's the one that I want to get rid of, kind of taken off the excess part of uh, that uh, overlay, if you will. So. For me, I'm going to take off the top part, and so now we have the bottom. And so now we have a complete drop shadow layer here in QGIS. So now we got to get it out of QGIS and into WSV3. So here's how to do that. We want to select the symmetrical difference layer in the layers panel. Then we want to go up to export, save features as an ESRI shape file. Then we're going to go in and we're going to type in new drop shadow layer. And when we're going to put uh, that in the folder that we can save it in and hit OK. So we've saved that. We're ready to go back over to WSV3. So you're going to want to make sure, again, that you have a counties lines map like this. If you don't have that, I encourage you to go back and watch my first tutorial that I did on that specifically because it's only going to make sense to have that to then add the drop shadow layer to. And you'll see what I mean once we add that drop shadow here in just a moment. So in order to get that going, we need to go up to WSV3 up at the top left and hit program settings or you can just hit control O on your keyboard. And then we want the GIS system tab and then shape file layer. And then right next to the add button, just to the left of it, it's a little piece of paper tab there. And then we want to go to the folder which we saved everything. And we want to find our new file that we just saved of the new layer and bring it in and then hit add and then go into style editor and we want a filled polygon and then we want to hit the fill style and I've already created a fill style and I will be happy to show you my settings for that here and so I've got the alpha it looks like it's all the way up I've got it set to black and then these are my sizes there so you're welcome to 
copy those verbatim. It's just, you may have to adjust those accordingly to your liking or desire. It may not be a one size all fits all, if you will. So that's how that works. If you have any further questions on that part, feel free to drop those down in the comments. So there it is. As you can see, we now have the drop shadow layer into WSV3 and I can move it in and out just like I showed at the very beginning of the video. And again, if you have any further questions about this specific tutorial, drop those down in the comments and I will be glad to answer those as soon as I can get to them. I appreciate everybody tuning in on this tutorial and I hope it helps. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you tune in for the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.